CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Um, it's a non-invasive means of providing ventilatory support for patients with respiratory uh, distress. Increases pressure in your lungs, opens the collapsed alveoli, pushes oxygen across alveolar membranes, and forces interstitial fluid back into circulation. All right, so let's talk about this. When you have continuous positive airway pressure, I put on a mask on somebody and it's constantly blowing air into the patient's face. It's building a pressure inside that patient's lungs. Now this patient might have water in their lungs. You hear rails. You know this patient has left-sided heart failure. All right. You put on this CPAP on this patient and it's forcing interstitial fluid that's inside of those lungs back into circulation. Your lungs are like a sponge. If you take a sponge that's full of water and you squeeze it, water will come out of the sponge. That's exactly what's happening to your lungs, except the opposite of squeezing, right? You're increasing a pressure on the inside and it's pushing water out, okay? So that's exactly what's happening with these CPAPs. Now, patients that have also collapsed alveoli could be due to uh, reduced surface tension from water. You're opening them back up. Okay, it's a good thing. CPAP does great things when it's indicated. Deli typically delivered to a face mask, secured with a strapping system. Now, understand that if these strapping systems are not on correctly, there will be a leak. If you do not have a leak, or if you do have a leak in your CPAP, you will not have PEEP. PEEP. PEEP stands for peak end expiratory pressure, PEEP, all right? You need PEEP to create a uh, pressure inside those lungs. Pressure relief valve determines the amount of pressure delivered to these patients. So right here, it's not the best photo of it, <clears throat> but right here, this is the valve, pressure relief valve. So we got a pressure relief here and on this valve, we get to see what the PEEP is. Understand what peep, the PEEP valve does is, yeah, the excess pressure gets blown off and we get to see whenever our patient exhales, remember, remember what I said PEEP stands for? Positive end expiratory pressure or peaked end expiratory pressure um, is our PEEP, expiratory pressure. What is our patient doing during this pressure? exhaling. So whenever I talk about measuring our PEEP and utilizing our CPAP, I'm always paying attention to my patient's exhale. Uh, first, I want to make sure that this thing is flowing, right? If I'm placing it on this patient, I'm going to talk about the indications and contraindications here momentarily, but let's just talk about placing this on a patient. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I'm flowing, right? Um, I'm probably going to start at around 10 liters per minute. All right, I put the CPAP on the patient's face. I never apply a CPAP on anybody's face if air is not flowing. All right, if you want to talk about claustrophobia and talk about people freaking out and suffocating them, put a CPAP on somebody's face without O2 flowing. All right, so we're going to place, I'll probably start at around 10. Make sure that is on their head completely. Make sure everything's tight. I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to place it around the patient's face. What I'm feeling for is any sort of air leak. If I feel an air leak, I need to readjust my straps. Once I determine that my, my straps are on tight, I'm gonna go in and pay mine to my flow meter. My flow meter, every single time my patient exhales, I'm gonna see that flow meter move, okay? That's how we know how much PEEP I'm delivering to this patient. All right, so some indications for CPAP. When am I gonna use it? Patient is alert, able to follow commands. Number one. All right. If you ever see a truck, if you ever see it in a hospital, if you ever see anywhere where they're putting, where there's a CPAP on somebody's face, blowing air in their face and they're unconscious, they killed them. I'm just being honest with you. Okay. And the reason why I say that, um, 
you have a respiratory drive, okay? Your respiratory drive right now is built on your carbon dioxide. When my carbon dioxide develops and increases within my body and in my bloodstream, it triggers me to breathe. If you put a CPAP on somebody who is unable to follow commands, there is a chance that not only is this CPAP can potentially take over their respiratory drive, your body has compensatory me mechanisms. And all that means is that your body's always trying to save itself. For example, we talked about this little formula up here. Carbon, or I'm not sorry. Um, cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. If my stroke volume decreases, my body's compensatory mechanism is to increase my heart rate. That's just normal, okay? Your body has different mechanisms of saving itself. One of them is breathing. If there is a device that takes over breathing for your body, your body will say, sweet, dude, thanks. I don't have to worry about it. Applying CPAP to somebody does not, should not be used to take over their airway. You'll kill them, all right? It's not breathing for anybody. It's just providing positive pressure. So you putting it on somebody who is not alert and not able to follow commands and is not able to focus on their breathing, you'll take over the respiratory drive and you have a potential for killing that patient. Another thing that it has a chance of doing is stimulating a vagus nerve or vagus tone. Like I said earlier in this lecture, you stimulating a vagus tone will actually decrease a blood pressure and can lower the heart rate. You can kill somebody by applying CPAP. Make sure they follow commands. Obvious signs of respiratory distress from an underlying disease, rapid breathing, more than 26 breaths per minute, that affects overall minute volume. Patient is breathing too fast. Try to get them to relax, okay? I'm gonna tell you right now, somebody who's breathing super fast and they're extremely anxious, they are not going to tolerate this mask. It also says pulse oximetry of less than 90. Let me talk about that. Patients who, let's say, let's say we have someone short in breath, and you opt to put them on a non-rebreather mask and our patient is struggling to breathe. They are tripoding already, they're having a hard time breathing and they're satting at 80%. We're like, hey man, relax. You might think it's anxiety related. You place entitled capnography on the patient. You're now placing a non-rebreather mask falling at 15 liters per minute. You think you're doing what is right for this patient. And after a couple minutes with that normal breather, you note that the patient's oxygen sat went from 80 to 82. No, barely any change. And that's with oxygen. This patient may be a candidate for a CPAP. Okay. Do not think that CPAP is only intended for patients with CHF because that's false. Okay, I could apply a CPAP to patients with, uh, with asthma. Okay, I could apply CHF to, to any patient with shortness of breath, um, as long as they meet my indications or my guidelines that they can follow. Now on the screen here, we have some contraindications. Please, please, please know the contraindications of CPAP. This is gonna keep you out of trouble. Um, and also you don't want to be in a scenario where you do apply CPAP thinking you're doing a good thing and you actually make things worse. Okay. First and foremost, again, patients unable to follow commands. And the command that I want you guys to remember is breathe like me. Okay. Whenever I coach somebody on a CPAP, I sit in front of them. So they're staring at me. Right. And I say, breathe like me. I, I emphasize on my exhalation. All right, I try to get them to breathe like me. And, and if they're watching me and they're able to follow my command, that's a first very good sign. They're following me. If they're looking at me and it's just this blank stare and they're not doing anything that I'm telling them to do, they're unable to follow commands and I'm taking it off, okay? If your, patient, if your patient goes into respiratory arrest or they begin to have agonal respirations, I'm telling you right now, you're going to kill them. End of discussion. You're going to kill them. Take it off. Patient is unable to speak. 
their shortness of breath is so bad. And I've been in a scenario where I place CPAPs on people that are having very difficult time speaking. The respiratory drive is so fast. We need to try to slow it down before we apply CPAP. Okay. The exact opposite, hypoventilation. The patient is barely breathing. This is not for these people. If your patient is so weak that they can barely breathe and you play CPAP on them, again, you're going to take over the respiratory drive. You have a potential for killing them. Look, dude, there's a ton of contraindications for CPAP. Hypotension, another big one. And I'm going to tell you this now because it's bit me. Um, check a manual blood pressure. I've, I've dealt with these patients where I show up and they look like shit. I hear the rails. They look cool, pale, signs of shock. But we get a blood pressure on our monitor that reads high. Because guess what I want to see whenever I'm putting a CPAP on somebody? I want to see a high blood pressure. That's what I want. That's what I, I hope I get every single time I place a CPAP on somebody. That just means that they have classic CHF. Classic CHF congestive heart failure, we're gonna, always gonna have hypertension. If I see hypotension with CHF, guess what I have? Cardiogenic shock, a huge contraindication because hypotension, right? I do not wanna place a CPAP on somebody with cardiogenic shock. <clears throat> the best way to obtain a blood pressure is a manual blood pressure, okay? Do not get caught with your pants down. Take a manual blood pressure before applying a CPAP. Shit, take a manual blood pressure before giving nitro to a patient. Don't trust that monitor all the time. It's going to bite you. It's already bitten me a couple of times. Pneumothorax, any sort of chest trauma, contraindication, okay? If I have any damage to the patient's lungs and I apply positive pressure ventilations to this patient's lungs, you can obviously already see what's going to happen, all right? We're going to accumulate more air into the pleural space. Head injuries, um, applying at pressure, positive pressure to a head injury can be a problem. Uh, facial trauma, tracheostomy. Guess where all that air is going to go if your patient has a trach? Out of the trach, okay? So do not put a CPAP on a patient with a trach. Uh, GI bleeding, nausea, vomiting, GI surgery. The patient can't sit up. Patients need to be in high Fowler's position if I'm placing them on CPAP. Unable to fit the CPAP. If my, feet, if my CPAP doesn't fit on their face, don't use it. And here's an interesting one. Can't tolerate it. I talked to you about this a little bit earlier. Patients who are struggling to tolerate it. They have claustrophobia. These people are going to rip it right off their face and you're going to be fighting with them in the back of the truck. Guarantee it's going to happen to you. Watch, you're going to jump out of the back of this truck and your shirt's going to be freaking untucked. You're going to have shit thrown around everywhere. You just had a freaking war in the back of the truck with this guy who's not tolerating the CPAP. Let me give you a freaking some advice. Sedatives, all right? Use your benzos. I'm not going to snow somebody that requires CPAP. And when I mean by snow somebody, I'm not going to knock them out completely. Remember, if I knock somebody out, do you think they could follow commands? No. Do not place a CPAP on somebody that is uh, sedated. I can sedate somebody very lightly using something like Versed, low dose Versed. Depending on the size of my patient, I might start with two milligrams to, let, to try to basically take the edge off. Have them relax. It's going to slow their respiratory rate. It's going to help them relax. It's going to help them tolerate this mask. Okay. So don't think that benzodiazepines cannot be used before using uh, CPAP. They can P, positive and expiratory pressure. The patient will exhale against resistance. That's that air blowing into the patient's face. Now, five to 10 centimeters per water, all right? Centimeters of water is the therapeutic range. So with that being said, this is how it works for me. I turn on my CPAP, I apply it to my patient's face, right? Make sure, obviously, they meet all the indications. They don't have any of the contraindications. I start at five peep. So what I do is I coach them. Usually, I'll start at around 10 liters per minute. I put it on their face. 
and I say, follow me, breathe like me. While they're doing that, I'm looking at the gauge that's telling me this little gauge, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing that it at least reaches five every single time my patient exhales. So now let's talk about that. Is it going to always be the same liters per minute to achieve the same peep? Absolutely no. If I have a little old lady who's breathing like this and she's having a, she just doesn't have that forceful of breaths, guess what? I'm going to need a lot more oxygen to be cranked in liters per minute to achieve the peep that is desired. If I got this big dude who's breathing really hard, <gasps> I need way less oxygen to achieve that peep. I'm sure that makes sense. Always pay attention to this peep gauge. I'm gonna start at five and I'm gonna work my way up depending on my pulse oximetry. Let me clarify, mask is on, patient's being coached. Right now, we have an oxygen sat of 84%. I tell them, hey, breathe like me, I'm focusing on my exhalations. Patient's doing great. They're tolerating the mask. They're able to follow my commands. They have a good blood pressure. I look at the peep, the peep gauge. We're at five peep right now. Great. Keep it up. I might even ask them, hey, how does this feel? Is it comfortable? Is it okay? Do, are you getting oxygen? Does it feel better? Usually they're going to shake their head yes. I look at the O2 sat. O2 sat right now is at 86%. I don't like that number. And that's after a couple minutes of having the CPAP on. Guess what? Let's increase the rate of that liters per minute. If it's at 10, I'm going to go to probably 12. What I'm going to try to achieve is around 7, 7, 5 peep. Okay. Those are typically the three that I go from. I go from 5 peep to 7, 5 peep to 10. Okay, I'll try to get it to 7.5. Once I get it to 7.5 peep, I'm now gonna wait a couple minutes. Breathe like me. Hey, what's our sat say? Hey, our sat now is 94%. Boom, done. I don't need to keep increasing my peep. I've achieved the oxygen saturation I'm looking for and I'm going to continue with my transport. If my patient is unable to obtain the 94%, I'm going to max my peep at 10 uh, centimeters of water. Okay. Max of 10. 